Um, I'm absolutely thrilled to have Anna joining us. Um, she's an incredibly accomplished artist and a phenomenal teacher. Um, and uh, she used to teach for us when we were, um, you know, back in the studio. Um, and now we're thrilled to have her joining us um, on Zoom uh, this summer, and of course for this demo class. So, uh, Anna, take it away. Okay, hi you all. I am so happy that to see you all. Uh, my name is Anna Stump, and uh, I'm a studio artist. I'm mainly a painter, and I have other big projects, which are very fun. Part of the reason I'm out here in the desert. But today I'm going to lead you through um, an exercise. I thought it would be better uh, than giving you a lecture about what I'm gonna talk about just to jump in. So do you all have uh, something to draw with, uh, a paper? Um, if you've got some paper and a pencil would be fine. Um, I'm going to spotlight my my let's see there's my pad can everybody see my my pad okay so i'm going to use um i'm probably going to start with a pencil uh but i i might be switching to uh some pens and i just want to show you what they are i usually show people what i use um these are i use a copic marker because it's easier sometimes to see on zoom um and it has these beautiful tips um, so you, you see, you can, you can use the marker, the fat marker, but I often use like a paint tip. Um, so just if, if you wonder what I'm using, that's what I'm using. Okay. And I'm going to be, uh, drawing the most mundane thing in the world, a twisty tie. So, uh, if you've got one, uh, at, in your junk drawer, or you can use mine if you can see it well enough. Um, so what I want to talk about here is this class is about developing a drawing practice. I am a painter and I hardly ever do finished drawings. Um, I use drawing though like I use talking uh, and I, I'm so comfortable drawing my partner is also an artist. And oftentimes when he and I can't communicate, I'm like, would you please draw that for me? He draws it for me. And then I draw something back. And then it's just the way that we communicate. So I wanna help you all develop a practice for in your sketchbook uh, that you just improve your drawing skills and you start to draw every day. Uh, that, that will be our goal to draw maybe five times a week. Um, so, we're gonna start and we're, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna draw from life uh, this twisty tie and I'm going to draw it and I'd like you to try to draw along. If you don't have a twisty tie, you can also get like a rubber band or if you've got anything on your studio that's simple, like uh, I've got a matchbook or even my glasses. You're welcome to do any of those things. Have it be something that's small and that you can move around, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw this in different ways over and over, okay? So I'm just gonna start and I'm gonna talk to you about my process of drawing. So I believe that the best uh, way to learn uh, these skills of drawing is to work from life. So I'm going to do basically a contour drawing and we will go over this during the class if you sign up for the class. Um, but basically I'm doing the outlines and I'm drawing pretty slowly. So if you can draw along or you can draw your own object um, and I'm trying to draw exactly what I see from my vantage point, very slowly the outlines and oops, my fan, I've got a fan on pretty strong because as Amanda told you, um, it's extremely hot here. Um, so it's split, it's moving around a little bit. Um, and what the, the important thing about this class is going to be to, do, to work on lots of different styles of drawing and, but but really not worry about anything being finished at all, okay? So 
uh, and fill our sketchbook um, so that our drawing skills are improved, but we're not worried about making um, masterpieces. We're just gonna play, okay? I'm gonna put another twisty tie on here and draw another one. And this is, well, let me pull this one apart. I've got, I had two. Um, and for the class, I would tell you in advance, okay, for today's class, could you prepare your own props? Um, because you drawing from my prop is really drawing almost from a photograph because obviously it's not drawing from life. And because drawing from life is so important um, that I just, I want you guys to, to be able to have the experience that I'm having, okay? Um, so the idea of drawing from life and improving your eye and also just sort of uh, sorry I'm drawing here I lost my train of thought there we go okay and if you want to add a little bit of shading you can I've got a, I've got the light coming basically from the window here so um, of Joshua tree so, so you see right here, I've done two drawings from life of this silly little thing, okay? Um, and I did them exactly life size. So I'm drawing from one thing to the next, okay? Um, how's it feel? Are you guys trying it? Are you, are you doing a little bit of drawing? Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna, I'm gonna change this one. And this time I'm gonna draw it, I'm gonna try to draw it bigger. So I'm gonna enlarge it and I'm, I'm just gonna keep on drawing on it exactly the same uh, piece of paper that I'm drawing on. And I'm saying, okay, I'm gonna make it bigger. I'm gonna make it fatter. I'm not making it super much bigger, but just trying to really follow the contour and look at all the little details. I'm not sure that you can see them from my twisty ties, but um, sounds like extra people are joining, that's nice. I actually stole this um, exercise from a student. I had this wonderful student who worked with me for many years. I, I, I've taught at the community college level. And he used to draw twisty ties all the time. And I was always like, Michael, that is such an amazing thing. And he would have these, he would make these twisty ties and they would have such life. And I just loved it and, and he used color. So in our class, we'll be using different media. We'll probably use some colored pencils. We'll use some ink, but today we're just using uh, just pencil. I'm gonna do one with an ink pen now, just so you can see how that would look. Um, I'm gonna switch this up. And this time what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw this bigger and behind the other. So I'm going to um, start, I'm just sort of started to make like a, a strange little composition. Um, and I'm going to overlap. So I'm thinking about, hmm, how can I make a composition here without even thinking about it too much? I'm gonna go underneath this other drawing that I have. So you see, I've got this twisty tie here. I'm gonna go underneath it and there we go. So you can see, I, I love this, uh, the Athenaeum doing these um, free classes because it's almost like you're auditioning your teacher to see, does this drawing, this style of teaching fit me? Which I just think is sort of really cool. You know, you don't have to go on any of the, there are websites, you know, that talk about how teachers are and they're, they're not, sometimes they're not very nice because the, the students who don't like the teachers tend to leave reviews. But um, it just shows you, oh, this is the way Anna teaches. I, I'm sort of talking as I'm drawing a lot. So in the class, um, what we're gonna be doing is each week, I'm going, we're going to be leading in an exercise 
Um, we'll start with, out with really simple ones. This is probably not super simple unless you've already got some experience at drawing. And we'll draw. And then I'm gonna give you an assignment, okay? So I'll say, okay, for this week, would you please practice what we learned? And I'm hoping that you'll, you'll draw you know, some each day. And then 24 hours before the class starts, I will ask you to send me your best drawing. And I will put together a PowerPoint to with one drawing from each student and I will we'll do a critique at the beginning of, beginning of each class and we'll say, okay, we'll talk about each person's work and you know the, the things that they were doing really well, things maybe that they could work on to improve. Um, and then we will go on with the, the rest of the lesson. So um, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. All right, so let's look at what we're doing so far. I'm gonna put this cap on. I'm gonna try drawing a, I'm gonna bring in, oh, a different object, a matchbook. Oh, I'll leave these on in case you're gonna, if you, in case you still wanna draw um, the twisty ties. I'm gonna bring in a matchbook, okay? I'm gonna go back to pencil. And on the matchbook, this time I'm going to draw this matchbook with uh, a little bit of a gestural drawing. So I'm gonna get more of the shape first. So I, I think about uh, the two main parts of the ways of drawing as gesture and contour. And we generally do some of each. Um, so a, with a gesture drawing, you see I'm drawing much faster. And uh, I did a quick little sketch of the matchbook that the way I see the matchbook, okay? And then I'm gonna go back in and I'm going to uh, use some value and we'll talk about this in the class. You know, how do you use how do you use basic value when you're working with just improving your drawing skills? But again, without trying to say, oh, I gotta make a masterpiece. No, I'm I'm draw to communicate. Uh, I draw to uh, make plans. I draw to work out, work on a painting, a composition of for a painting because I'm a painter. Um, so there's lots of different reasons to draw and we'll talk about those. Um, and of course you can draw as a final product, but again, in this class, we won't be so much working as on drawing as a final product. We will be working drawing on drawing as uh, as just on working on communicating and talking about what are the es essential ways of communicating and why is it important to communicate through drawing. We'll talk about all of those things and some of my favorite, I'll bring in some of my favorite artists who, who use drawing as a media. So here we go. So I'm just quickly putting on, in a little shading here. So you can see this is a different kind of of action there, okay? And let's do one more. I'm gonna put this two rubber bands, okay? And I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna say, hmm, I've got these random things from my junk drawer. I'm going to now do this last drawing of this, of this uh, rubber band. And I'm gonna sort of like try to connect all of these crazy things with a giant rubber band. So let's see if I can do that, okay? Um, and of course your drawings are gonna look really different than mine. I'm gonna go back to contour drawing since it's so hot here and it's a little bit calmer way of drawing. So yeah, the desert is um, normally, it's really beautiful, but a couple months of the year, it's, it's a challenge. It's a challenge being here. And I'll just, I, I tell people these stories because sometimes they can't believe it. But, uh, our swamp cooler went out the other day and a swamp cooler is basically what everybody uses out here for most of the year. 
um, it's a big fan that uh, is connected to uh, your house, but it runs water through the outside edges of, of the fan. And so it cools it off and a very, it's a very low tech situation. And it is basically the same energy as running a fan, um, not an air conditioner. So um, we, the first uh, two years that we were here, we were not here full time um, and we did not have air conditioning and we just had the swamp cooler. So the swamp cooler only works when there's low humidity, which the desert normally has. Um, but in August, the humidity is pretty high. So anyway, uh, we got air conditioning last summer. Uh, but anyway, our swamp cooler broke earlier and we always walk in the desert. You watch the temperature all the time. You know, you wake up and you're like, what's the 10 day forecast? And you're watching it and you're like, okay, that's good, 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 uh-oh, something bad is coming and you're like preparing. So I could see this bad week was coming and the swamp cooler broke. I'm like, oh my God. So I call our handy guy. He's like, okay, I'm coming right over, you know, and I could smell it was the motor that, that just runs the water up into, the, into this box and it had burned out. So he goes and he gets a new motor and he puts it in and it wasn't a big problem. And all of a sudden he turns it on and it's so quiet. I'm like, oh my God, this is so much nicer than we, what we've been living with for three years. We had this terrible old motor that was probably 50 years old. I don't know. And it was like living with like this jet noise, like, and we thought that was just the way swamp colors were. So then we're like, oh my God, it's so much better. Anyway. So that's my desert story for you up there. And I haven't seen a, sn no, I have seen a snake recently. So I can tell you more, more stuff like that. I, I had a snake story recently, but I won't, I won't scare you. Yes. How are you guys doing? If you are uh, needing to have a question answered, you can unmute yourself and just um, ask it. I don't mind. Nobody has a question, a everybody question. can. Sure, go ahead. Uh, you mentioned 4B pencil. I mean, is there, is it just because it could do a little range of values or what's your? I am actually using a 6B, which I like even better than a 4B, but a 4B is pretty good. It's not focusing very well. Um, I like a really soft pencil because it has more dynamic range. So for example, with a, with a 6B, I can do a very light mark, but I can also do a really rich, dark mark like that. You see how beautiful that is? And it's very soft. Do you see, uh, I, just with that um, uh, hard um, mark making I just did, it, it really um, carved into the pencil. You see this one is really, this is also a 6B. It's, uh, it, it just is a really soft pencil and it's beautiful. Um, so I prefer a darker pencil. So if you're gonna take my class, you know, when we use something like, um, you know, just like a regular writing pencil, that's not even a B pencil. That's, I think that's a, it's not an F, but in any case, it's, it's too light. And um, you wanna be able to have that dynamic range. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Okay. How that about an HB? HB, HB? HB is uh, lighter. It's, it's lighter than a, a 2B. So I would say that um, that's more like a drafting pencil. It can sharpen really well, mm -hmm. but um, it doesn't have the darkness that um, I think is really beautiful. Um, okay. But of course, it's up to you. If you prefer an HB, I'm probably just when I see your drawings, I'm going to, you know, say, great, but you need to really um, push the darks a little bit more. Um, so that's, 
generally. It's, it's just easier to get a beautiful dark line if you want to um, with, with the Bs and the, 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 the 6B, the 4B. There's a 9B pencil, I love it. 8B pencil, but it goes really fast. It, it, you, almost, you have to almost just keep your X-Acto blade and just keep on you know, cutting it um, so that you don't waste too much of it because um, it just wears down really quickly. Does anybody else have another question? Do you use any eraser at all? No, I hardly ever do that. Um, and I think that's a matter of confidence. And so that's really what this class is about, is about drawing enough. So drawing is like practicing a sport. It's like uh, practicing basketball or ice skating or something. The more you do, the better you get. And that's all it is. And so after you become confident, you really hardly ever need to use an eraser. I, I don't know if I have one around here. Um, you know what, if I, made, if I make a mistake, I just like sort of incorporate it into my drawings. Um, and we might do some, some uh, exercises where you, you intentionally make mistakes and sort of see, uh, you know, uh, what it would be like to do that. Um, but of course, you can use an eraser if you want to. It sort of slows you down. I'm gonna add a little shading on this just for fun. So, but that's a good question. No, I usually don't use an eraser. If I do use an eraser, it's almost always a gummy eraser because um, it doesn't smear things. So anyway, does anybody else have a question? I have a comment and that sure. is, that, um, I, my nose runs constantly, and so my life is surrounded by Kleenexes, usually in various states of disuse, and Kleenexes are just marvelous to draw. I Pumpkin totally Kleenex. agree with that. I agree with that. We probably, so if, we're, if you're learning to draw um, fabric, you start with a piece of paper that's just maybe a little bit wrinkled. I, I don't know if I've tried Kleenexes, but I've tried paper towels. I will definitely have to try a Kleenex, but yes, because yes, it's they, white. They provide marvelous hills and valleys and they're, they're landscapes. Yes. Excellent, I, I definitely agree with that. I'm gonna take the props away for a second and just sort of look at, so, you know, when I see a page like this, um, and we're gonna talk about the value of sketchbooks. I have so many sketchbooks. And we were talking about fires the other day, earlier in this class. And, you know, I've always tell people, if I, if I had time to get things out of my house before a fire, I would grab my sketchbooks. I'd grab some art and I'd grab my sketchbooks. And I'd grab the dog, of course, uh, and my partner. <laughs> but because the sketchbook is like, a, a moment of your life. So when I look at a sketchbook, I can remember where I was, what I was doing, you know, even my teaching sketchbooks and I have sketchbooks for teaching and I, I can go through and look at my sketchbooks and go, oh, that was that class. And those were the students and that's what we talked about. And so, and I don't have a very good memory but I have a visual memory. And it's almost like when I'm drawing, I, uh, the, the, my, my mind is in a different place that helps me to sort of imprint, okay? So I could see, um, you know, like I, could, I can remember things better. I can see things better. So these are all things that I hope, um, if you take my class, um, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to inspire you, hopefully, that you really learn to not think of drawing as a chore, but something that is just like to look forward to. Like it's just something that enriches your life just completely. Can I, um, can I just have you guys all, um, just to see what you did, if you want to, I'm gonna go into a gallery now. And could you just hold your, your sketchbook all up uh, and like, I'll do it to me right now like this. Could you just do that? And so that I can just see if you did any of this and just try not to move it. So, oh, great, wonderful. Oh, um, is that a mouse? Great, wow, I like it, wonderful. Excellent. 
That's great. I had a rubber um, band and it became a flower. <laughs> Excellent. So. Yes, that's, you know, anytime you get inspired to do something more, you know, that's just like dessert. It's ex it's extra. Um, is there any other questions that I can answer about my own practice about the class? Um, you sort of got an idea of what we do. We draw together. We talk about it. You talk, you know, yes, Meryl. Um, are you going to tell us before the class what medium to, to have available? I mean, if you're doing pen and ink, for example, I don't have any and I would get it. Yes, I will. I will give you a, a hopefully a two week advance notice. Okay. And I can tell you for the first class, all you would need is a sketchbook and a pencil. So. Okay. Thank you. So you can get that. But I'll be emailing. I'll be in email touch with everybody in the class. Great. So Does is this, sorry. Yeah, this is Gail. Is this class for people that have drawn in the past? It's not for beginners. Right. Um, it can be for beginners. So I will I will be discussing um, like for I will be doing some basic ideas about so for example what is a contour drawing um what is a uh what is shading with cross hatching um so I there will be some basic lessons if people are more advanced I will be giving them more advanced uh challenges to do so for example if I have um if I have uh for doing cloth I might set. I might say, okay, my advanced people. I would like you to get a cloth with a plaid on it, and I would, you know, so the the beginners would be doing a plain white cloth, and the the more advanced would be doing a a, a plaid. So you and I, I would hope that each person would talk to me and say, I need simpler, or I need, uh, you know, I need more advanced work because uh, I, I don't know you and this class is got to will have be open to a broad range of, of oh, people yeah the the only problem i see is for beginners like me uh the critique might be difficult every day you know every day every class especially if you're a beginner oh, the, uh yeah the i the critique is just a matter of of you take where you are and you just try to improve. So you're not co being compared to other students. You're just being, you're, we're, we're talking about where you are and, at, and getting you to improve as a beginner or as an advanced student. So I wouldn't be worried about it. Okay, thanks. Does anybody else have a question? All right, well, I hope you enjoyed it a little bit and I hope you'll consider uh, drawing with me and uh, you can look up my work under, I have a website, honestump.com. So if you're curious about what my, my own personal painting looks like, um, yeah. Amanda, do you have any other thoughts? No, it was so wonderful. I just was mesmerizing watching you work and, and talk about it. And I loved seeing what everybody had, has done too. That was really, really amazing. So thank you all for joining us. I did put a link to the, um, the more information about the class in the chat. And I'll also follow up with an email. Um, and you can always email me if you have any questions. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hope to see you. Bye. Bye. Bye, Anna. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.